Hey you guys, Erin and Liv here, and we are sitting down for a little girl talk today. So a few days ago on my Instagram stories, I put a little Q&A box, and I'm gonna answer those for you guys here today. Also, I wanna encourage you guys, if you haven't already, go back and check out last weekend's video. We did a full-fledged what we eat in a day as a family of four. It's very thorough. There's some fresh recipes. The dinner recipe was just added to our Eat Move Rest meal planner and recipe app, which is linked below in the description. Be sure to grab it. We're always adding all of our latest and greatest recipes right into the app. One other note, we do have one Costa Rica retreat scheduled for 2024. Yeah. It'll be in March as usual, and it's almost full already. So if you are interested, be sure to click the link below. Send us an email so we can reply to you as soon as possible with all of the details. Jumping right into the video, I'm going to refer to my phone for the questions. If there's anything you want me to elaborate on, be sure to pop that in the comments below. And if I'm getting a lot of the same comments, maybe I'll make a whole separate video for it. So first and foremost, plant-based, hormones, postpartum, how am I doing? That's where I'm gonna start off because I have gotten my period back for the first time in five years. So I actually got pregnant with Max in 2018. And of course I was without my cycle. And then while breastfeeding, I continued to not get my cycle back for about 18 months postpartum, at which point I noticed signs of ovulation, but I never actually got my period. And lo and behold, a few weeks later, I found out that I was 10 weeks pregnant with Liv. So I went without getting my period between kids and Liv just turned two years old July 1st and I got my period back about one month ago. They say about 18 months postpartum is the ideal time to begin thinking about getting pregnant again. It's when your body has really had time to fully repair. About that time, I started incorporating maca, which is an adaptogenic root back into my diet, which is amazing for hormones, libido, energy, stamina, and both times it has worked like a charm. Like I said, I ovulated right away, got pregnant right away with Liv, and this time around, I just got my period. So I would highly recommend checking out maca root. So you can find great organic powdered forms, which is what I use, and I add it to a smoothie, or you can try Your Super. They have the Moon Balance blend, which also contains a few other ingredients like beetroot, shatavari, and hibiscus, which can also further aid in your hormonal oh. health, even if you're not of childbearing age. It can also help with PMS symptoms. In the past, yes, I did have some irregularity with my periods. In early high school, being a cross country runner who was very long and lean genetically and naturally, I always was irregular and a lot of times doctors just attributed it to being lean and being a runner. That being said, the way I got it normalized was not only through herbal supplements that are natural and organic, but also through making sure that I was getting enough calories and enough macronutrients and enough healthy fats especially. So if your cycles are irregular, a lot of it boils down to that. You need healthy fats for your hormones to function properly and more importantly, enough calories. So if you're looking to add more calories without eating junky food, it's really as simple as eating more of what you're already eating. So if you're having a fruit lunch, add an extra couple pieces of fruit to it. If you're having a smoothie, maybe add some protein powder or an extra couple of frozen bananas or an extra scoop of chia or flax, you get the idea. I have several friends and coaching clients who can attest to the power of a plant-based diet, helping ease their PMS symptoms, menopausal symptoms, and beyond. There's a lot of science and research as well. So if you guys want me to do a deep dive, let me know in the comments. The next two questions go hand in hand. Number one is, how am I feeling about aging? Am I in the anti-aging camp or am I in the aging gracefully camp? Meaning am I embracing it or am I fighting it? The other one is what are my favorite top products that I cannot live without? So I used to work at my dad's family practice slash medical aesthetics clinic. So yes, I dabbled in the lasers and the chemical peels and even Botox. All of that was in my 20s when I probably didn't need to be doing it anyways. But now in my 30s, I'm less about 
fighting aging and more into aging gracefully. What I like to do is be as proactive as I can because it helps me to feel confident in my aging rather than insecure about it. And I feel like with age comes wisdom, so I'm excited to step into that. I'm excited to step into this next level confidence that I hear about from women in their 50s and 60s and beyond. So am I afraid of aging? Do I try to combat it? No, I try to arm myself so I can age as gracefully as possible. So that means eating foods that are going to benefit my skin and my health and using products that I know are clean, that I feel confident and certain aren't going to have adverse effects. My favorite activity to do when I have quiet time is to pamper myself and it all comes down to skincare. I've been dabbling in and trying so many different things, but what always stays consistent is using Osea Malibu products because they're extremely effective. So yes, today I'm wearing makeup, which I often do for YouTube videos, but on most days I'm allowing my skin to breathe. I feel a lot more confident because my complexion is clearer and smoother than it has ever been. I've been really obsessed with Osea's latest release and that is the Sea Glow Resurfacing Scrub. I love it most because it's a two in one. It's a cleanser and an exfoliant, which means I can get more bang for my buck and more done in less time being a busy mom of two. It contains amazing ingredients. I love using it just a couple times a week in the shower. It gives my skin more of a glowing, dewy, and fresh look. It helps my skincare to apply and absorb much more efficiently. Some other favorites of mine are the Andaria Algae Body Oil, as well as the Body Butter. I use the Hyaluronic C Serum every single day, as well as Ocean Eyes. I also love the Advanced Protection Cream and the Seabiotic Water Cream, which I alternate between at bedtime. I cannot say enough amazing things. I highly recommend checking out Osea. You can use my discount code as well for 10% off. Other favorite products that I can't live without, Sun Warrior is a big one. They have a lot of anti-aging and skincare type of products like the collagen protein peptides and the Beauty Greens Collagen Booster, which I put in our green smoothies daily. So here's a juicy question. Do you ever crave meat or animal products or what do you crave? So I'll start by addressing this. There's a difference between cravings and hunger. So first and foremost, you have to ask yourself, is it really that I'm just needing more calories and possibly more hydration? So the first place I would turn if I'm having what I deem a craving is water. Make sure that you are staying super hydrated because that's really gonna cut down on artificial appetite and hunger pangs. Second, like I said, make sure you're getting enough calories. If you eat something, it's going to tamp down a lot of those cravings. And third, if it is a true craving, they say that they only last seven minutes. So set a timer and power through it by arming yourself with those weapons of mass nutrition instead. For me personally, I do not crave animal products at all whatsoever. In fact, my brother and his girlfriend and their two boys were just here over the weekend. We had such a blast together going to the beaches. They're very heavy on the animal products. They did a lot of scrambled eggs every day. My brother eats lots of seafood and tuna we are generally okay with that kind of situation. We are tolerant vegans. We tend to think that it's very off-putting to be the opposite. And we're not trying to impose our lifestyle on everybody we come across, especially family members. They know how we are. We know how they are. If someone wants to shift, we're there to help. I offer the kids and all of us scrambled tofu, which everybody really enjoys. And I actually like the taste of better. We also bought some Dr. Prager's veggie burgers, which Max and Liv enjoyed while the boys had their beef burgers. Hunger comes down to simply using food as fuel to avoid that issue. Cravings usually come from an emotional place. So if I were to have a craving for an animal product, it would probably be something having to do with a memory where there's like that trigger or that tie to like a fun time in your youth. But honestly, there are so many memories that have been made outside of meals. So I would seek those out instead. And remember, food isn't what takes you there. There's so much more. There's intimacy and bonds and connections and ties and relationships, friendships, family, faith, all of these things you can look to for that, those same warm, fuzzy feelings. I think it also helps to put yourself in the future rather than in the past. How am I going to feel after I do this or eat that? I actually recently wrote a newsletter on this topic and there are two different options if you have an unhealthy habit or if you slip up. You can either change the behavior or get rid of the guilt. 
One is tangible and one is intangible. The guilt is intangible. That comes with the inner workings of the mind. And the other option to stop the behavior is tangible, which is very much easier to do. And also it comes with the benefit of not having the guilt afterwards. So it's a two for one. So it's much easier to avoid the craving or avoid the unhealthy habit. If I don't do this, I'm gonna be proud of myself. Not only that, I'm gonna reap the benefits. I'm gonna feel better and more energized. And it's doing my body more good in the long run. So I got a question on hair. Do I color it? Do I bleach it? As well as hair growth and nail growth, hair and nail health. So I'll package this into a couple little tips and tricks. Number one, I've been doing oil treatments to grow my hair out and I think it has really been helpful. I can link the product that I bought on Amazon below. It's organic, it's super clean, it has essential oils in it and it has castor oil, rosemary, and other ingredients that really help with stimulating the scalp and the hair growth. I also really love Sun Warrior's Beauty Greens Collagen Booster, which like I said, I add it to smoothies daily, as well as just staying on top of nutrition, making sure you get getting those macros, especially enough protein because you're going to be needing those amino acids to regenerate and grow new cells. I don't color or bleach my hair. I do get highlights only about twice a year. With highlighting, the product isn't actually touching the scalp. It's only underneath the foil. I'm not too worried because it goes on and then gets washed off. And after that, I go home and I do a second wash and then I don't worry about it for six months. Also, I'm not sure what the product is called, but my hairstylist did say that she's using highlights highlights that do not contain ammonia, which I can tell it doesn't have that smell like it did before. And I only wash my hair about two times a week. In between, if I need to use a dry shampoo for oily hair, because I do sweat a lot when I work out. So I bought a little empty jar that looks like one that you would put herbs and spices in, and I added arrowroot powder to it. It works immensely well. It's the same as dry shampoo. It works great for blonde hair, but if you need it darker, you can add cacao powder or cinnamon or something of that nature. Try it and let me know what you think because it works amazing for me for dry shampoo. So we've gotten a lot of questions about how to keep the spark alive if we are intending on expanding our family. And first and foremost, I think what has helped us keep the spark alive most is effective and regular communication. So keeping the communication lines open, if something bothers one of us or if we're just not feeling quite right, we're okay saying it to each other and we're okay expressing ourselves. I also think we both really benefited from reading the book, The Five Love Languages. So we all communicate our love in different ways. So Dusty is a physical touch guy. It seems like it's a male thing, but I've actually really learned to embrace it and I've learned how much I need it too, especially since becoming a mom, that skin to skin, that closeness, even just a hug or a kiss or a shoulder rub, like that really helps me to feel noticed and recognized and loved and appreciated. So I really like it when Dusty does those things and I'm trying to be better about doing those for him because I realize how it makes me feel. I think also having that Dedicated alone time really makes a difference. We do afternoon nap drives where we just get quiet time to relax together. And I also think that, you know, being busy parents, also having our own businesses, it can sometimes fall by the wayside because we're wrapped up with work and kids. But just like everything else, I schedule it into my phone if I have to, or in the beginning of the day, we make a plan for that after afternoon quiet alone time. So if you have to schedule in, do it. It needs to be a priority. And on that note, also scheduling in those date nights, having those once a month or so, just making sure that when you need it, you take it. Also, if you can remember that love most definitely is a choice. So even on the days where you don't feel it, it's important to still choose love and still act in love. And when you act certain ways and do certain things, the feelings eventually follow. It's the same with fitness, which leads me into another question. How do I stay motivated, consistent, and disciplined? So what has helped me the most is accountability. It's what we all need. It's what drives us to achieve our goals. So I really love doing the free workout programs I've found on YouTube from Caroline Gervin. And if you watched last weekend's video, I just got a Peloton. I've been wanting one and dreaming about one for years. I really love having something new in my workout routine. So changing it up can help a lot. There are tons and tons of different classes and programs and challenges, different lengths so I can fit it in anytime 
of the day. So that's what I recommend is just finding like a program or like the cool thing is that Peloton also has a community aspect to it. And I really enjoy that. As far as my weekly fitness routine, I am a cardio girl through and through, but especially as I age, I have recognized more and more the benefit of resistance training to build strength, to build stronger bones and more muscle definition. As you get older, your skin will naturally start to sag, but resistance training can really, really help. Cardio can lead to lots of injuries, so you just really have to be careful and keep that delicate balance because cardio is also important for the heart. So what I like to do is typically I won't do a spin for longer than 30 minutes and on my cardio days, then I'll usually do some arms, like 20 minutes of lifting my upper body afterwards or doing some planks or even some core work. But for the most part, on other days, I really try to stay consistent with lifting and I typically use dumbbells. So one day I'll do a leg day, the next day it'll be an upper body day and then it'll be a full body day. Then I'll sprinkle in a cardio day. I work out six times a week and I'm very dedicated. I do it first thing in the morning. I always recommend that if you're trying to stay consistent, pick a time and do it every day. That way you don't have to think about it or try and squeeze it in here and there, but just do it every day at that time if you possibly can and I find first thing in the morning is best because then I don't have to think about it the rest of the day. A lot of the times we lose steam and motivation by the end of the day, but whatever works best for you, whatever you feel like you can make sustainable is what I recommend. Ooh, so here's a juicy one I have never really touched on before. How do you deal with the haters? So yes, it comes with the territory. I knew that stepping into this social media content creation influencer world, Geez, how long has it been? Since 2015, the overwhelming majority of the time were met with nothing but love and appreciation and thanksgiving and gratitude. So many wonderful DMs. Our Eat, Move, Rest family seriously keeps us afloat. We love you guys so, so much. So for the most part, it's all overwhelmingly supportive and positive. You guys are really believers in us and our mission and that means the world to us. We really try to weed out the just off base, like totally lost in the woods, like rude comments. Honestly, I'm so busy and life is so fast that I don't have time to even dwell on those. Hurt people, hurt people is very true. The mantra that goes through my mind still today is thick skin, thick skin, thick skin. So with every single jab, my skin just gets thicker and not in a bad way. It just, I feel like I'm growing stronger every single time. It's kind of like, when you're lifting weights, you have to experience your weakness. You have to feel that pain in order to grow. If it's something that's coming from a place of constructive criticism, that's a totally different story. A lot of times I will ask more questions and do more digging or do more research for myself because we embarked on this journey to learn to become the best versions of ourselves, not to live a lie. So we are always seeking truth. Thank you to those of you who have supported us along this journey because it isn't always easy and there are down days. There are a lot of you guys whose comments I have actually screenshotted and I sock them away in a folder on my phone called Sweet Messages simply because when I'm feeling down in the dumps, it does sometimes help to have that uplifting, life-changing story to go back to and remind me why we do what we do. I've seen a few questions about weight loss and what it really comes down to is that honestly, not all calories are created equally. So I went from a place of wanting to lose weight in college when I had gained a significant amount from binging on alcohol and fast food and all of that junk. My digestion slowed down and I turned to processed packaged foods like lean cuisines that had low calorie counts. I was eating 1500 calories a day to lose the weight. It just wasn't sustainable because I found myself starving. I was eating empty calories and it just wasn't working out. When I switched to plant-based, I now eat upwards of 3000 calories, which is almost double. I'm able to sustain my weight while feeling super satiated and also being able to do intense workouts, breastfeed, carry children through a full successful pregnancy and childbirth, all natural pain-free. So I would say what's most important is what you're putting in. Maybe you need to track using an app like Chronometer to kind of become more familiar and calorie conscious as I like to call it. So doing that for maybe 30 days straight will help to empower and educate you on the caloric density of various whole plant foods. So if you're sticking to whole plant foods and avoiding the processed packaged foods while also working in some form of physical 
physical activity, that is the best way to lose weight and keep it off. You just have to do it day in and a day out. And the more that you start to see results, the more you'll want to keep doing it. Three last rapid fire questions. Are you still Catholic? Do you want more kids? How are you liking Florida? Yes, we are still Catholic. Yes, we are still Catholic, but more importantly, we are first and foremost Christian. Even on the Sundays where we don't make it to church, we still try to keep the Sabbath. We still try to incorporate God into not just our Sundays, but our day-to-day -day lives. We educate our kids. We have children's Bibles for them. We watch amazing nature shows on TV and bring it back to God. Honestly, everything we're doing to teach and raise our kids, we're always trying to bring it back to God. On beach days, we talk about the beauty of his creation. I also really stay consistent with my apps. This is where our devices really can empower us and help nurture our relationship with our creator. Two apps I really love are YouVersion, which is a Bible. There is also Jesus Calling, which is a devotional that also includes Bible verses. So that can be kind of like a starting point. So Florida, how are we liking it? It's kind of a toss up right now. There are so many benefits to living here. Our yard is just flourishing. It's thriving. It has grown so fast. It's been so cool to see how easy it is to grow so many of these lush, amazing fruiting and flowering tropical plants. We love being super close to the ocean. We never take it for granted. We try to go two to three times a week, even if it's just walking on the beach. The major drawback is being far from family. It's super hot, but only June, July, August pretty much. But being that we have a pool and access to the ocean, it makes it super fine for us. We actually prefer the heat over the cold. Overall, it's been amazing, but the area we're in feels a little desolate just because we're between two cities and we would like to be maybe a little bit closer, not in, but a little bit closer. But we've also toyed around with the idea of renting out our house as a vacation rental and traveling the world a little bit more, hosting retreats in other areas. So if any of you guys have traveled internationally for an extended period of time with kids, let us know in the comments, share resources for anything and everything from homeschooling to how you made it work. So we're thinking we might need to explore a little bit more and maybe put down roots somewhere else for another time being, but we definitely don't feel like we're here forever, but we are very grateful for where we're at right now. Do we want more kids? I'm very open to more kids. At this point, I'm kind of like just in my groove, just doing this thing, being the best mom I can possibly be for Max and Liv. I think Dusty feels the same. If we were to have another one, we would be super overjoyed, but at the same time, if it doesn't happen, we're fine with that too. I also had someone add a question about how do we feel about raising kids in the current climate, just how scary the world's becoming. So simple answer for that. My grandpa actually told Dusty and I, you know what? I was worried about the exact same thing. The world has always been a fallen, broken, and scary place to raise your kids. If we let fear dictate our lives, there is a lot less living that would be happening. So I highly recommend you guys to not live your life based on fear. There is a lot of evil, there's a lot of darkness in the world, but the light will always outshine the darkness. I feel like raising happy, healthy, well-adjusted children is the light in that darkness. I encourage you guys that if you have children and you're worried, or if you don't know if you want to have children because you're worried, they are the light in the darkness. It's our job to raise these individuals to be the people who change the world for the better. So that's what we're working on. Not like we're placing pressure on our kids, but we are doing our best to just raise our kids to be the game changers for the future generations to come. All right, you guys, I think I'm gonna wrap it up. There were a lot more questions, but I just can't simply get through all of them without talking your ear off for over an hour. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have additional comments, maybe I'll do a follow-up video. Let me know in the comments what really resonated with you and how you're going to improve your life moving forward. So another reminder to check out Osea Malibu. Their Sea Glow Resurfacing Scrub is to live for and be sure to also check out our retreat link below get the meal planner and recipe app and until next time eat move rest your best bye guys oh also for those of you who are curious i never ever shop on amazon but i searched for something with like natural fibers and this is linen and rayon which comes from bamboo so i got it on amazon it's my one and only amazon outfit I'll share the link. There are three things we all do every day and we could all be doing them better. Eat, move, and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, Olivia, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, 
healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.